What's happening everybody? TK here, TK and Drinks, and welcome to another episode of Tuesday Night Live. We got a What's the Story coming at you this week. As you know, every Tuesday we get together here live on Instagram, drink some beer, sometimes we talk a little bullshit, sometimes we do an interview with a mead maker or somebody in the mead industry, and tonight is going to be no different. We are joined by my friend Anne Marie from Odd uh, Elixir Me. It looks like she's just popping in right there. Let's go get, yep, got the got the invites coming in, going live. And I appreciate you stopping by or anybody who views it in the future. Uh, we both know anybody, you know, appreciate y'all what you're doing. So, wait. Hey, can you hear hey. me? We can hear you, we can see you. It is all good. I need to adjust awesome. the camera on my end, clearly. Yeah, I've been, I've been having uh, reception issues all day, so I was really worried that uh, <laughs> we were going to have issues tonight. But uh... Ah, seems to be doing fair enough, at least. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks for joining me on such short notice. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I am doing particularly well today. How about yourself? It's good. It's a good day. Gotcha. It looks like you got a titanic wall of cans behind you there. That's uh, a, yeah, to say that's the great. least. We're, we're finally in our new space, so we're not crammed into a 75 square foot uh, fermentation room with all of our cans off site. So it's really cool to have a wall of cans. Yeah. How how deep is that? It's only two. It's only two rows deep. Oh, okay. But still, that it looks very imposing. <laughs> What's going on, Hidden Hive Beverages? Um, so, uh, yeah, I didn't have anything necessarily particularly planned out, but I'm definitely glad to have you on the show. I did want to at least chat with you about a couple things we talked about last time you were on. Actually, this is like the third time you've been on. Starting to become a regular <laughs> guest, which is awesome. I've never had a regular before, but I start to consider you my first regular appearing guest. <laughs> um, one of the things, if anybody's been following Odd Elixirs, which you should be, if you're not, go give them a follow here on Instagram and on Facebook as well, Odd Elixir Meads. And uh, this year, over the past year or so, they've been releasing a series called the Spectrum Series, where they've been releasing a flavor profile, flavor and color profile attached to you know each color in the spectrum, also including brown, black, and white, and gray, I believe, as well, which is actually just mm -hmm. released uh, today or is releasing, either just released or is releasing shortly. It was just released, uh, and gray is the last in our uh, our lineup of, uh, of spectrums. So that one is an Earl Gray mead with a little bit of vanilla and some gray salt. Excellent. Yeah, I think that when we talked about it initially, I think the first one was just getting ready to drop or something like that. So you had a whole, the whole spectrum's gone by and how did it go? I thought it was such a unique concept. Yeah, we had, I mean, some were more popular than others. Um, some of my favorites were maybe not the most uh, popular. Um, there are some, there are some flavors that we use that um, I think people don't really know a lot about. So uh, one of my favorites was uh, yellow, which was pineapple and turmeric. Oh uh, yeah. Which I, uh, anyone who tried it loved it, but it, that was a hard sell. Uh, people saw turmeric and thought curry and went no. <laughs> right. uh, you know, we did uh, blackberry um, for black. That one. Uh, that one was gone in, in a few days. White was coconut. So that one was gone in a few days. Um, so our very first one, uh, which was pink, which is a guava goza style mead. Uh, that one is actually coming back into as, as a sour seasonal. Uh, that one was so popular. So there's a few of them that may make a, a re reappearance. Um, and then we're getting ready to be release. We've held back a little of each of those and we're going to release some 12 packs. Uh, with a 12th flavor or a 12th color that we're calling Yes. And it is going to be, a, it's a mead done with glitter. And we're releasing mm -hmm. that for, we have Love is Love Week starting next week here in DeLand. So we're releasing those 12 packs for Love is Love Week. Nice. And is that going to be a 12 pack? I'm assuming those bottles were from the collection as it appeared throughout the year, not a separate yeah. brew that you've made for that 12 pack? Yeah, we held, we held back a small portion of each batch. Oh, nice. Um, we had a question here. Is how did you guys incorporate the coconut for that one? He's, this person's had mis mixed success with it. Coconut's 
rough. It can be really uh, oily and really, um, uh, uh, really cloudy. Uh, we actually, uh, we, we reached out to some of our, our flavor suppliers and we were able to find a, an artisan, uh, artisanal es extract, uh, or not extract, an artisanal concentrate um that worked very beautifully um and then we added a little bit of vanilla in there because we i was going sort of that, so that coquito so if you're in the southeast uh that's i think everyone knows what that is but for those who don't it's essentially a coconut eggnog oh uh so Sounds yeah it's it's definitely a uh it, it's definitely a southeast it's a latino uh kind of holiday uh favorite um the best way i can describe it is coconut eggnog <laughs> Okay. Um, so we, we added a little bit of vanilla for some sweetness in there. Um, but yeah, one of our one of our uh, suppliers that we've been working with on some of their artisanal concentrates, um, th this one this one was a hit. So and it didn't it didn't leave that uh, suntan lotion uh, flavor that sometimes coconut can leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I'm not interested in anything with a coconut type of or a, 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 a <laughs> suntan lotion. Yeah like tropic tropic sun smell and tasting yeah like, oh. <laughs> yeah sometimes coconut, oh. you know, coconut can get weird sometimes uh we were really happy with how this one turned out and evidently everyone else was too i think we sold out of those cans in like four days they it, it was I, I came in one day and they were gone i'm like what what do you mean they're gone <laughs> right so Dang, that's crazy. Well, I'm glad that the series was a success. Like I said, that was one of the more unique concepts that I'd seen come out um, from any of the meteries and stuff. Is it something that you think you're going to continue again and run a second round sometime? Or do you already have plans going? I haven't seen anything you post about a second series, but... Uh, we have not. Um, I, I've, I've got a few. I like doing series. I think they 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 kind of challenge. Uh, they, they challenge flavor concepts, um, and it's also fun to play around with weird flavor concepts on a small scale. Because if you do five or ten gallons of something and it's a flop, it's no big deal. You know, it, it's it, it's not. It's it's different than putting in you know four or five barrels of something and then no one liking it. You know, I, I can I can toss ten gallons and be fine with it the next day, but. Um, so we'll probably do another um, series. Um, we have done in the past, we've done our 12 uh, Meads of Christmas, which hasn't really been done in the, uh, this didn't get done this past year. We just didn't have the space for it because we were in the process of moving from our old location to our new location. That mm -hmm. will probably make a reappearance uh, for 2022. Um, but we may space that out. So we may actually start that a little earlier in the year than trying to shove all 12 flavors out in, uh, you know, in, in one month span. So you might see that start trickling in in the fall, um, but I don't have any concrete plans on that. Um, I do know that a couple of the uh, spectrum flavors will will be seen again um, in a in kind of a special uh, release uh, format. Pink is coming back. It's called. It's going to be called Pink Pixie Pop, and that's going to okay. be one of our sour meads that we do seasonally. That's going to be our summer sour. Um, that comes out. So that one's one that people have been looking for. So I'm, I'm excited about doing that one in a larger scale. That's cool that you're going to rename them and brand them into like, like you were saying, like a reappearing role, a seasonals, limited edition batches type thing. That's, that's very cool that you got to, that that whole thing just even occurred like that. Um, you mentioned, you said you have, uh, what, what is it you have coming up next week? What event is starting up? A, a pride event? Oh yeah, next week is, uh, it's called Love is Love Week in Deland. Um, it's actually about 10 days because we don't know how to count around here. Um, so we do a whole week of uh, Pride events. Uh, we'll start on Friday and that's, uh, we have a, a new mead called, or not, it's not a new mead, it comes out every year for Pride Fest. Um, called Unicorn Fruit, that's gonna be dropping on Friday at the beginning of Love is Love Week. Um, we, we added cans this year for the first time because I've got all these lovely cans I can fill now. Uh, so Lovely. I've had some people that are really excited about uh, being able to get unicorn fruit in uh, in cans, and that contains uh, six ingredients that all represent a color of the rainbow. And a portion of the proceeds for that go back to our local pride organization. Right on. It, now, switch gears real quick. Are the cans specifically for this event, or are they get it, the, the cans are going to be a reappearing thing throughout the process? It, it's like you guys are doing a can blind. So we will do we will do cans every every year from now f moving forward now that we're able to. So this is the first year we just we just added canning uh, to our lineup back in April of 2021. So we've we've been canning for less than a year. 
So gotcha. some of our kind of uh, smaller releases uh, that we've only done on draft in the tasting room, we'll actually now see, we will see some of those coming up and, and small runs in cans as well moving forward, which is really exciting to be able to get some of those special things out into distribution uh, that we weren't able to do before. Uh, did you increase the, your, the capacity of your can output? Like, do you have, like, increase your system size or anything, or are you still kind of doing it on the same scale you were? We're still on the same scale, but with a, with our new location, we're, we're able to move far more efficiently. Uh, mm -hmm. So the canning process is becoming, has become far quicker and far more efficient. Uh, so we're, okay. able, we're able to put more in cans just because we have more space um, and, and, and ability to do so. I, I don't know if, if we talked at all about our old space in the past, but our old space was literally 75 square feet. Our uh, yeah, old space could fit in most people's with, kitchen. Yeah, you guys were sharing <laughs> the space with somebody, weren't you? Yeah. So we, we were working out of 75 square feet. So it, 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 towards the end, it got really challenging because you'd have two fermenters stacked in front of each other that had to, you know, you, then you had to move this one to get to that shelf and you had this much space to can in. And then when you were done canning with that one case, you had to move it off to somewhere else to be labeled. Now we have a thousand square feet and we're able to actually have more of an assembly line set up for our canning. Even though we have technically the same equipment, it, it works, it works better. And I remember you guys didn't really have a storefront there. Do you guys have a tasting room or storefront? That was a, I remember some of you guys were talking about as well. So our shared space that we had before, the bar that was up front sort of acted as our tasting room. Um, and right. they, they got all, they get all, they get all the special releases and all the one-offs and everything like that. That actually has stayed the same. So our mm -hmm. tasting room, which, which most people see as our tasting room, that has not changed, that has not moved. Um, okay. Just our production has moved. Um, just about a mile north of where we were before um, into a much larger space. So as from what the consumer sees, it really hasn't changed much. So. Very cool. But for you guys, it's a whole, you get to it's stretch your legs. <laughs> you get to, get to do your own thing and not be have anybody else in your space, not be in anybody else's space. That's got to feel good. Yeah. It's great to have room to move around. Um, the old space got really challenging, especially for me because I'm in a wheelchair. So moving through a space that has stuff just crammed in it, not, not very conducive to being able to uh, work very efficiently. So this space has allowed me to be able to move around. I can maintain tanks myself. I don't have to get someone in to help me maintain tanks uh, because I can get to everything, which is really cool. So uh, um, it'll be even more exciting uh, moving forward in the next couple of months, just putting in a couple of other um, neat little devices to help me actually be able to lift some honey into, into fermenters because, you know, 60 pounds of, of honey here is great. 60 pounds of honey here is a whole different story. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anybody that likes to lift 60 pounds of honey over their head in yeah. a chair <laughs> otherwise. That's, yeah, that's not fun. Um, do you have a group of apprentices or apprentici, whatever the plural there is? Uh, <laughs> do you have some accolades helping you out? We have a few people um, in the community that um, they jump in and help whenever we need to. Um, we've got a, a good friend of ours. is uh, He's uh, talking about opening a meadery um, here in the next couple of years. So he hangs out and and, uh, and kind of trying to learn our tricks and uh, how, how we do things. And so he can kind of incorporate that into his business model as he moves forward. Very cool. Teamwork makes the – well, I hate saying that. Teamwork makes the dream work only because <laughs> – as I understand the old Amway thing, I don't really want to support Amway, but unfortunately it seems fitting at the time. Um, you guys doing anything for uh, Women's History Month? So we do a meet called Glass Ceiling, which was released today. Um, re we release it every year on International Women's Day. Um, this will be our fourth year, I believe it is, doing this mead. And this is a mead that was the original recipe was actually created or the original flavor profile was actually created by all of the uh, female bartenders um, at Abbey, uh, which is our tasting room. And then every year we tweak it just a little bit. Um, this year it actually got a bump in alcohol. It went from six and a half percent to 8%. Uh, now that we're in, now that we have more uh, fermenter space, we're able to kind of play around with higher alcohol uh, meads because we don't have to turn things around as quickly. So that's really nice to be able to actually get some of those higher alcohol meads out there. Not that 8% is super high, but, um, we, we tend to, we, we, we tend to specialize in session meads. So anything over 7% gets, is, I, I kind of, is in high category for me, but, um, I got a bump in alcohol to 8% this year. Um, it's done with blueberry, cherry and acai. 
And then it's flavored with basil and lavender. And so we've got one is done so on cool. glass ceiling. Um, and that's our uh, International Women's Day uh, mead. So. That's so cool. So, so I was just at the um, store the other day, and I had, they had these giant bags of frozen acai berries. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, I don't think I have seen anybody make a meat out of those yet. I mean, maybe you guys did once. I don't remember it. We do. This is, I think this is the only one we would do with acai. Acai is not fun to work with. It's thick and pulpy, and mm. it's, it's really difficult to clarify. Um, so that's probably why you don't see it on a larger scale because it's not fun to work with. <laughs> I don't well, foresee I us agree. ever doing this one in a larger batch just because it's it's they're they're very they're, it's a it's a very um, uh, fibrous. There, there's just a lot of stuff that's just hard to get out of there. The first year right. we made it, it was probably the ugliest mead we've ever made. It was it tasted great. It just didn't look pretty. <laughs> I hear that's the same thing with. Um with mulberries, why you never see any mulberry meads or where you rarely see them is because they're so difficult to work with and the cleanup process is such a headache. Again, from what I've heard, but it makes sense. Yeah, I, do, yeah, I do one mead with mulberry in it, but we use just a mulberry juice. So it's already clarified when we get it. Um, our Witch Please, our, our Halloween release has black mulberry juice in it. Actually, that's what I'm drinking right now. So. <laughs> oh, cheers. Yeah, I, I'm drinking a, right now I'm drinking an IPA from a local spa spot here in Arizona called Saddle Mountain, the 5G. It's kind of a cool looking little logo. I like the, the old pilot awesome. helmet with the bus. Yeah. I'm really Just jealous. A, when I lived in Arizona, there were none of those cool places there. <laughs> what part of town did you stay in? Down in like Tempe or were you in Phoenix proper? I was in uh, Mesa. I, I, oh, lived Mesa. In, I lived in Mesa for seven or eight years in the, uh, in the, in the late 90s. Oh, okay. I guess I actually like, most of the 90s. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I'm sure the craft beer scene wasn't quite what it is now because, yeah, right now that area is just, like, inundated with, with decent spots. Yeah, no, I was there in the 90s. I went to ASU for a few years before moving back to Florida. And, uh, yeah, there was, there was none of that cool stuff there when I was there. <laughs> oh, you went to ASU when it was the party school. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So uh, how's my man Blair doing? He's, uh, I'm assuming he's a worker or something. He's actually, he's in the other room working. Um, we've got some batches that are being maintained right now. And uh, we actually have a, a few uh, DIY projects that we're working on um, just to kind of finish up some of the, some of the small little projects that haven't quite gotten finished. So I've got him working in the other room, but uh, he's still brewing over in Daytona at McKay's and uh, then coming over here a couple days a week and helping me out here. So. Nice. Very cool. That, I, I, again, I like the family that brews together, stays together type thing. <laughs> I, wish, uh, I wish every family had, could find something that, you know, some sort of common bond like that. Um, <laughs> see here. Got a, a resounding pull off of that. Um, so you're saying that you got, uh, you guys are so, let's say, what was it you said? Um, kind of specialized in the uh, session meets and stuff. Do you guys see yourself now that you have the larger space kind of adding uh, stellar meads, higher ABV stuff? I know you said like eight, nine percent, but that's you thinking like kind of more not necessarily like a barrel age, but just, you know, traditional still meads and stuff. Yeah, actually, we are um, we are in the process of planning an entire line of the higher alcohol meads. I've got our uh, we, I've actually got one in the fermenter right now. So we do two higher alcohol meads for Central Florida Highland Games in January. Uh, we do a mead called Blood on the Moors, which is a cherry almond mead that's 14%. And then we do one called Viking Funeral, and that one is 17.5%. And Viking Ooh. Funeral actually just finished fermentation, um, and it, well, it'll still need, it's still going to need a few months of aging time. Um, and we're going to put it on a little oak, which is going to be different than we've done in the past. Um, so we're, we're definitely going to be adding a line of higher alcohol meads. Um, uh, some of our, our, our special release meads that we do, um, throughout the year are going to get a little bump in alcohol into the eight, 10, 12% range, um, which I'm really excited about doing. Um, and then once we get everything really settled in here, we actually partner with a local distillery. Uh, and we get, we usually take, usually once a year, we'll get a rum barrel from them and we do a batch in that. So I'm going to be excited to actually be able to start that program back up once we have a spot to put the barrel. 
Um, and, and it'll be nice to be able to start doing that again. Heck yeah. Now these ones that you're switching or bumping up the ABV on them, are they going to still remain carbonated or, or, you know, slightly carbonated? Or do you plan on switching the switching that up on any of them or are you just going to kind of see how it plays out? Um, it'll depend on um, each one. Um, even though they were, some of them were low in alcohol, we still didn't carbonate it. Like we did carrot cake, uh, oh. which is a carrot cake um, meat is done with lactose. And we always put that on nitrogen um, when we Ooh. served it on draft because we didn't want the CO2, CO2 adds a flavor. Uh, when when right. CO gets, gets dissolved into the liquid, it adds a flavor. And we really didn't want that that added in, in there. Added so, um, you know, that one always stayed still. Um, there, are sev there are several of them that, that we've always tried to keep still. Uh, like we, our Benny's Brew is our current uh, winter seasonal. It's coffee mead. Um, that one stays still. Um, so we, those, some of them will, uh, will continue to remain still. Um, okay. But now we just, you know, we have the the ability to now be able to can at least with a little bit of petalance just to get that little that just that little bubble in there, um, right. so which will be nice because uh, it it does add a it, it adds another level of uh, of sensory feel to uh, to the drinking experience to have just that little bit of of bubble so the, the flavors don't get too heavy on the tongue it, yeah. it makes things a little more refreshing too for sure. Now, some of these higher ABV ones, they said the one you got up to 17 and change. Uh, I'm assuming that wasn't fortified in any way. What yeast were you using with that? We use the French white wine yeast for the majority of our meads, um, and this the same with this one. Um, so it's a, the, this wine yeast is good. They say up to, they say between 15 and 17 percent. Uh, we, do, uh, we do a slow honey addition throughout the, the first uh, 16 weeks of fermentation. Uh, so we're able to kind of push some of those upper limits of the yeast because we're not giving it all the honey at one time. We're doing little tiny additions throughout that that 16 week period. Um, so the yeast don't get overwhelmed and they're able to also evolve slightly. So they so the yeast that we have in that are, are they're active towards the end of the fermentation have a, a ever so slightly higher alcohol tolerance than what we started out with because they, you know, they have a very short lifespan. So they will actually kind of evolve a little bit to to survive at those uh those higher alcohols and we're also very careful to make sure we degas as much as possible so we're moving as much co2 out of there as we can um so we're trying to eliminate that because co2 is toxic to the yeast even though they produce it um so we try to remove that as quickly as possible throughout the process to eliminate that that stressor um and then we do uh we do staggered nutrient additions we'll add a little bit of honey a little bit of nutrient a little bit of honey, a little bit of nutrient throughout the process. Uh, and that allows us to kind of push the upper limits of what our yeast is already capable of doing. Man, that, so I've never heard of somebody doing it like that. And that's just my own ignorance. You know, I'm so new to the game and stuff like that. Everybody that I talk to, or, or let's say the majority of people I talk to are, you know, into the, you know, the faster fermentation as quick as, you know, front load all your nutrients and, uh, you know, staggered within to 72 to uh, 96 hours and or even you know front loading even more if you're working with like a kvike or something like that so for my ears to hear somebody talking about fermenting you know months you you, you know four months out that's so crazy like how does how does that process work and how does it uh, or how does it work for you i should say rather um and being able to like continually be able to provide because that, that that's a lot of time it seems like stuff sitting in the fermenter and in barrels and not making you money well, if you think about it, you're looking at four, four to six months, um, but you'd probably be looking at that anyways in, because if, if you do all of it ahead of time, or do it in, say, two, two editions, uh, you, you're looking at creating more off flavors that then have to have time to age out, and because they will go away, but, then, but they have to age out. When we hit the end of our 16-week our period, short of it needing time to clarify, it's completely drinkable. We don't have any of the higher fusel alcohols. There's really not a lot of off flavors that the yeast need to clean up. So we had at, at four months, we can clarify and, and package and we're done. We don't have to give it that rest time that you may have to do on some of these higher alcohol meads that are, that are all front loaded uh, with, with all of the, because then because the, the yeast just don't, if, if you don't give them the opportunity to produce the off flavors, you don't have to give them the time to clean up the off flavors. I got you. So like a more of a working smart instead of working hard type of mentality. <laughs> Either way, it's going to get done. Just how much 
and what type of effort you want to put into it. Yeah, and, and it, it also gives us, it's a, it, I, at least for us, I have found it to be a little bit more predictable for the higher alcohol meets. Because sometimes, you know, if you have to let a, a higher alcohol meet sit for, you know, three months, but you've only scheduled two months, well, now you're a month behind. Uh, what I've found is that, you know, I can, I can schedule this and I know pretty much with good consistency that this meet is going to be ready on this date. So I can put that into our release schedule. I can plan for it. Um, there's, there is it, it, for us, it takes a little bit of the, um, guesswork out of when it's going to be ready to release. I got you. Uh, let's see. Moco Asylum says his meets hit mid thirties at, MC, I don't know what that stands for because front loading. Now I'm doing her style because it definitely shows. Hey, you know uh, what? Like I said, it, I'm the one who's who's trying to learn something here. And if you guys are doing it, and, and my friend Luke up there, he's doing it. You guys obviously are doing something right. So <laughs> maybe that's a, a style and a, and a method I need to try out sometime. It, it sounds very interesting. Um, do you guys have a lot more control with this space? I mean, you have more room to try out different methods that you wanted to do clearly because you've got the, the, you know, the larger footprint. Oh yeah. We have a ton more control now. Um, we're able to add where we, uh, we're actually be adding a second glycol chiller. Um, so we'll have far, we'll be able to do more temp control. Um, we had added a glycol chiller with the old space. Um, but it was really challenging to get all the tanks hooked up or the bright tank hooked up and get everything set. This way we can actually access things and we don't have to, you know, we don't have to move things around and disturb uh, batches that are, that are going in order to get, you know, this one, you know, it cold crashing or this one into the bright tank. Um, we'll be adding, well, we're adding one new glycol chiller really soon. And then we'll be adding a third one down the line that gives even more temp control. Um, so that is, it's, it's, it's going to be really nice. It's also going to be nice to not have to pile things on top of other things. Um, it'll help us ensure our sanitation even better because we're not having to stack things in weird ways. I um, mean, it, it got really interesting there towards the end. We were in 75 square feet. We were producing 10 barrels a month. So <laughs> that's, it, got, it got really interesting there at the end. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. So holy cow that, you know, you guys need some sort of, award for you know most creative <laughs> brewing process or something like that because that's absolutely uh mind-boggling to somebody like me just like you said about the size of somebody's kitchen and i'm trying to think of how i would i i, I can barely produce one gallon in there and you're talking about <laughs> 10 barrels in a month like that's I, just so i crazy. used to joke that uh, this is why we grew up playing tetris so we know how to fit all the blocks into the right spot <laughs> Oh, I can just hear the background music going now as you guys are in there brewing and little fast motion say or you know, like eighty style montage. Uh, oh, that would be hilarious. Uh, so you're in your whole new space. Now you said it's only about a mile down the road from where you guys were at. Um, now that you got the bigger spot, you'd also mentioned distribution. I know you guys were already kind of lightly working in that and dabbling with it. Are you going to really ramp up on that or, or look to ramp up on that anyway? Yeah, that's, that is our plan. Uh, so we went, we signed with a new distributor back in August or September. Nice. Um, and that's been, that's been a great partnership. Um, they're, they're a small, um, uh, specialty distributor. Uh, so our product doesn't scare them. Uh, that's one of the problems that we had with our old distributor was that they just didn't know how to sell it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they, 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 they were a Miller Coors house and the craft team is amazing, but we're just a really different product um, that requires just a little bit of hand holding. And they were just not really equipped with the number of accounts they had to hit in a day and, and all of the, the requirements that they were put on. They were put on them by by the distributor, the large distributor. They really just they weren't real well equipped to, uh, equipped to handle our product. So our new distributor is able to kind of uh, you know you know do a little more hand holding, do a little more of the education with the uh, with the consumer uh, that they need to do in order to explain what meat is, why it costs what it costs, and you know um, you know the local factors and things like that. So that's fantastic. We're actually going to be launching a new core product. Um, April 1st with them. Um, so we we have not quite statewide distribution now, but we're we're basically Key West to Jacksonville. So it's, it's a good chunk of the state. So 
Very cool. Yeah, I can imagine the that sounds like your other distributor kind of got caught between a rock and a hard place, you know, at no fault of their own. They're getting stuck with something that they can't, you know, they want to be able to do the right thing, but then they're being restricted by other regulations and stuff. That's that's a really shitty spot for them to be in, and that, that sucks. But I'm glad you guys found a distributor to to uh, get you there going on locally. You, you think about branching up to, like, uh, Georgia, South Carolina, anything like that, maybe over to Mississippi, Alabama? Not anytime weird there soon. In Alabama. Uh, not anytime soon, but uh, we should be available on Vino Shipper. Um, pretty soon. I was really hoping we'd be available by now, but we had some delays getting in here. So that's kind sure. of set things every, you know, one thing gets set back and then everything else gets set back. Um, so hopefully we will be set up with Vino Shipper within the next couple months. Um, and then we'll be available through the entire Vino Shipper network. So yeah, that, that really does expand out. Like even if you're not, you know, distributing in all those other places, just being able to have exposure in those other states is really yeah. a big thing. I'm really surprised. Um, a lot more places don't do it. Actually, one of the reasons why I understand that some places don't do it, the, you know, Vino Shipper, it goes for beer as well, um, is because the, the, the labels are different. Um, not the labels are different. Uh, they have different regulations on labels when you're shipping them, you know, within state and then, you know, versus uh, intercontinentally, so to speak. There, there are, um, it just depends on what you're, what you're, how you set things up from the beginning, we've always had labels that were federally legal and not just legal in Florida. Um, so we are, for the most part, we have, we have, we've, we've, we try to, we try to incorporate enough information on our labels that we meet as many requirements as possible. Sure. And we've always done that from the beginning, um, just on the, you know, chance that we might be, we might have that opportunity to sell in another state. Um, so, so far, I haven't gotten any notices or anything that's saying any that are that any of our labels are missing anything. But you never know. Right. <laughs> and if it happens, then it happens, and we fix it and we move on. So, right. Well, that's that's some strong foresight on your guys' part, though, to to just go ahead and you know say, hey, we're gonna, you know, just meet all these requirements straight out the gate because you're, you know, it it, it meets your style. I guess some places don't want to, you know, necessarily feed outside their own market. They, they want to hit like a niche market and just kind of stay in there. But yeah, for anybody who wants to reach any point of real growth, man, that, that seems like a real good foresight on your part. looks like you're having a request to reach up to Maryland or Delaware as soon as possible, <laughs> which would be cool. Well, yeah, um, look for, follow us on Facebook and everything. As soon as we're available through Vino Shipper, we'll, we'll make sure to uh, let everyone know. But it is in the works for sure. The Vino Shipper thing. Oh yeah, is thing. we're all, we're already set up with Vino Shipper, um, and our accounts already set up and ready to go. Uh, we're actually just at this point we're waiting on production because uh, we got put behind. We you know we got put behind by about about five weeks. So now we're playing catch up on all of the orders that we had during those five weeks plus new orders. So once we're caught up with that, then we'll be actually we're actually going to be brewing oh. a batch specifically set it that's specifically allocated for vino shipper um that, so we'll be able to get up and get started on vino shipper we're starting with our we're gonna be starting with our, our three of our cores um green goddess will not go on to vino shipper it doesn't ship well and uh, until i figure that out we're not going to be putting it on vino shipper um but we have our, our abby normal and our our limerick are two cores and then hive is going to be a new um new core that's going to be launched um april 1st so so you that's, that's like the second or third time I've heard you mention the term core now. So through the distribution and the vino shipping thing, I'm assuming you're you're meaning you're going to have a core, having core flavors that are available, quote unquote, year round. Yes, our core. Yeah, I, I call them our cores. They're our year round. So we have we have currently three, uh, soon to be four uh, meads that we make all the time, um, that are yeah. always available. I guess that's the best the best term for it. The stuff that's always available. Well, that's very cool. And that, so that lime rick was the one you were telling me is, is made with um, key limes, right? Yeah, we use key limes. Uh, we're really fortunate here in Deland. The uh, corporate headquarters for Kermit's Key Limes, which is they're a key, key West company, but their their actual corporate headquarters is here in Deland. So we're able to get access to some really really amazing key lime juice. Uh, and we love to work with local provider, local uh, uh, you know other local businesses. So it works out really well. Very cool. And so what, so what are your, what are your four cores? You said, so the Limerick and then the other ones, um, 
So we, have yeah, Abby Norm- so we have Abby Normal, um, and that is yeah. a wildflower honeybee. Um, that's our that's kind of our flagship, if you will. Um, then, then the uh, limerick, and then we've got Green Goddess, which is done with peach mango and pineapple. Um, that that one um, that one has not made the transition to cans quite as well as I would like to. It's a very it's a very delicate mead, and it doesn't really like the abuse of cans. So we're kind of in the process of reworking the formula on that one to try to make it a little more stable. So that one will not go into Venus Shipper, at least initially, um, until I can solve the can issue. It does fine in kegs, but when we put it in cans, there's just something about there's something about all the fruit in that one. It just that that does not do well. But we're working on that. And then April 1st, we launch Hive. And Hive is going to be a light mead. Um, and light is in calories. It's going to be um, 100 calories per serving, 5 grams of carbs. Um, it's going to be a lemon. Uh, the first flavor is going to be lemon. We actually have four flavors slated for the year, but the first one will be uh, lemon. And that very one's cool. coming out April 1st. Very, very cool. I like the sound of that. What, and what's the last one? Hive. That was our last, the last one. Oh, oh nice. So, yeah, so I'm going to line with Green Goddess and Hive. Yeah, okay. man. So in this, at the <laughs> hive, you're going to have multiple flavor profiles coming out throughout the year. It sounds like you got quite the 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 plan and schedule going on. You guys are growing big over there, doing big things. Any other uh, big undercover secret projects that we should be on the lookout for? We might not necessarily be able to talk about them, but say, hey, keep your eyes peeled around this time for something special. When you. Well, we do have, uh, we're going to have some special, we always have a special uh, come out for our anniversary party, which is the beginning of August. Um, so I have not released what that flavor is going to be. Um, so that's going to be uh, one to look for um, coming out in August. And then I'm really hoping that we can get um, a barrel in here really soon because I've got some cool ideas for a barrel. That of course, that won't see the light of day until next year, but um, I'm really excited to, about some some ideas that we put together to, for a for a barrel aging project. Um, and, the, and the distillery that we work with is is really neat. So we will we'll take a barrel that they've just pulled rum out of. We put our meat in it. We usually age it in there for four to six months, and then we send the barrel back. Any solids that we put in the barrel, like cocoa nib, we did last last time was cocoa nibs, uh, vanilla, and uh, coconut. Mm. We left all those solids in the barrel. We sent it back, and then they put rum back in the barrel. Oh. They aged that again for six months, and then they released that rum as a special barrel barrel uh, project. So we yeah. released our mead, and that rum gets released at the same time. So it's a oh. really cool pro- project that we love doing, and I have not been able to do one for a little over a year now. So I'm really excited to be able to get – uh, get that, get a barrel back in here and, and start doing some fun stuff with that. Now, as the very special first uh, official continuing guest on the show, that that does make me like a little bit privy to when those are coming out, so I may be able to buy one like before they get <laughs> sold out, right? <laughs> we can probably work something out. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that that rum sounds so interesting. And you've said you've worked with these guys there before. How close are they to your uh, to the Abbey Bar? So they are in Holly Hill, so maybe 20 miles. So Holly Hill is just, just north of Daytona Beach. So they're not that gotcha. far from us. Um, they're okay. still in the same county. Gotcha. Uh, so real, real close. Um, and they're, they're great people. They love to play around with cool flavors. They make some really amazing rum. And uh, one of the things that we learned the first time that the first rum that we did with them, the first aging that we did with them, um, they ended up getting a write up in some international rum magazine. I don't follow rum circles. So I don't know what it was called. Yeah, either, uh, but uh, the, the, uh, the guy who did the write up on it uh, said that he did his research. And from the best of his the best of his knowledge, it was the first rum to ever be aged in a mead barrel. I was like, well, that's cool. <laughs> man that's that's something else and you got it from them initially when it had rum in it so it's like a, a yeah man it, did you have any of that rum how was it if you did oh yeah we get a so we get the first two bottles of each each run um of each of those and i usually buy a couple more because they go pretty quickly i usually buy uh, two bottles and then we have so we have one bottle from each of the two projects that we've done with them just sitting in the cabinet with a you know do not drink. <laughs> Tag on him. <laughs> do not break glass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now that is cool. Yeah, someone had mentioned, I think Sidetrack had mentioned that that's a cool collab. And that is. 
Um, it's I know there's definitely, I know there's definitely other meteries that are doing, you know, collabs with, with like, with uh, distilleries and stuff. But again, something like that, where it's a back and forth on one, it, that's a very, that's a very cool thing. And, and such a unique flavor. And that, that plays so well with rum naturally already, you know, rum is already ready to take uh, cocoa nibs and vanilla. In my opinion, every rum that I've had would definitely benefit oh, from yeah. some cocoa and vanilla. Our first one was vanilla and ancho chili. So a little mm. bit of smoke from the ancho chili, big sweetness yeah. from the vanilla. Of course, the oak already has some vanilla notes to it. Uh, oh. So that was our, the first one that we did with them. And we really weren't sure, we'd never done anything like that. So we really weren't sure what the rum was gonna taste like after it was in there. And you actually got more of the ancho chili out of the rum which was really okay. interesting. Uh, but there you can, you can totally tell, you can, you can really taste uh, the, the, the flavors because um, the, the, they're kind of those overlapping flavors in, in the two products when you try them um, side by side. We always try to hold ours, our mead back until they're ready to release their rum. They usually age for four to six months, an additional four to six months. So we, we put ours into a, a bulk tank and hold it um, so they can be released together. Gotcha. That's so, again, yeah, that's, that, that's a very cool concept that you guys got going on there. Um, you got, uh, so you said your anniversary's there in um, August. That mm -hmm. kind of almost correlates with, like, Mead Day. Do you guys have anything uh, special planned for Mead Day this year? We, we actually do it every year um, on, uh, on, on Mead Day. It, it actually just oh, worked okay. out that way initially. Um, we did our friends and family uh, grand opening in July, and we did our official public grand opening on Mead Day, the very first year we were open. Um, it just was a good coincidence that uh, we've, we've just uh, capitalized on every year. Um, yeah. So we do, um, one of the things that we were going to do in 2020 was we were going to actually do a Mead and Honey Fest. Uh, just a small, it's, it's August in Florida, no one wants to do anything outside. Um, yeah. But we try to bring in some vendors. Um, this past year, we brought in our honey supplier came in and sold honey. We bring in, um, in the past, we've brought in um, a local gardener that does classes on uh, bee-friendly uh, planting, uh, you know, yard, yardscapes and, and things like that. Uh, we, we bring in, last year we had a, a horn, um, a drinking horn uh, maker come in and sell mm -hmm. some horns. So we try to bring in uh, some local artisans and, and, um, and local e experts um, that kind of relate to the business that we do um, during our anniversary party and kind of do this little mini mead and honey festival. Um, and then we do, we do a bunch of releases um, for our anniversary. We usually have about four, four to five special releases on top of everything else that we have normally. That's, man, right on. Um, do you guys attend any festivals outside of Florida? Like, I know Texas Mead Cup just happened, and, and some other uh, large ones are getting ready to happen. you guys hit up any of those? We haven't yet. Um, they are definitely on our list. Um, hopefully, we'll have some time. They're always in really bad times of the year, unfortunately, because um, in addition to uh, in addition to Auto Elixir, I also am the executive director of a local nonprofit, and a right. lot of the a lot of the mead festivals, especially Mazer Cup, is during the time is always tends to fall on some gala or event that we have going with the nonprofit that I run. So then it becomes very travel becomes very difficult, and even if it's you know the week after or the week before, there's so much prep that goes into all of that. Just traveling during that time of year just becomes really complicated. Um, I'm really hoping that my schedule will become a little more predictable um, moving sure. forward here in 2022. So maybe I've, I've got Mazer Cup on the calendar for 2022. So I'm really hoping to be able to make it out for that. Right on. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, have you made any um, or sent anything off to any competitions in the past year? Uh, we just sent something off to Best Florida Beer. I haven't gotten any scorecards back. We didn't win anything. Um, what I found with with beer competitions is that we don't really make the right kind of product for for mead. We, uh, our our meads are session meads, so they're lighter. They're they're they drink drink more like a cider. Um, right. So for we entering them into beer competitions, I've never really felt like they scored well uh, because sure. of that. Um, I am really looking forward to entering some more mead-centric mead competitions because they have those session categories. So they're not looking for full-bodied 
thick meads, sweet meads. They're, they're actually, you know, being able to enter a session mead into a session mead category um, will be really nice to be able to do. Um, and, and to also have judges that are mead centric judges. Um, I think that'll be really, that'll be fun to do just to get the feedback, nothing else. Yeah, definitely. I would, yeah, I'd love to see you guys there. I, I'm, I'm dying to try some of your stuff and I know there's something going on with that, which is kind of kick ass, but, uh, it, you know, it, I don't know how to put it, but I, I just like to see all these, as many people get as much exposure as possible. And, and I have a feeling like, from just the passion that I what I hear in your voice when I talk to you, I know you guys are going to make a quality product. Like the thing I always say is like you might not agree with the flavor profile, but you know it's going to be a quality product just out the gate. Right. And well, thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, we try to get out. Uh, we do a lot of festivals here in Florida. Um, we do. Uh, we we try to get our products out there because it's one of the best ways to really um, showcase something as unique as ours. You know, because you get. You, you end up you're, you you end up being one of the most unique things there, so people tend yeah. to remember you. Uh, which is which is it's a it's been a really great way for us to get exposure and um, you know followers on on Facebook and Instagram even if they're not local even if you know say we're doing an event down in South Florida and now that we have distribution throughout the majority of the state we're actually able to direct people to a local business that is selling our product which is one of the one of the best parts about having a statewide distri uh, a distributor uh, partner. So definitely. And then it, it's nice because the people that pick it up are obviously people that are going to care enough to be able to have some sort of knowledge in the product base to be able to give you a leg up as opposed to like what you were saying earlier, a lot of those, you know, accounts, you can't just take this into something like, you know, you can't just throw this in like a, a gas station or just at your mm -hmm. generic, you know, liquor liquor store and hope somebody's going to be able to figure it out on their own you need to bring this somewhere where there's somebody who's going to pay it the proper attention who's going to give it the time when when the you know when the people approach it and stuff like that so that, i'm happy for you guys that you have that i wish uh i wish i could get somebody out here and distributing cans that's one thing i cannot do is find anybody that wants to distribute cans but that is a long <laughs> way to ship product like that I can understand. So. Yeah, the cans were uh, the cans were a new experience, and um, you know, there's there's always the uncertainty with the uh, with the can market, but there's oh, yeah. uncertainty in the bottle market too. You know, I've got a few uh, friends who are having a hard time sourcing bottles right now. So yeah, there's uh, there's uncertainty in all the markets now. I guess it's just a uh, pick your poison at this point. <laughs> so yeah, there's um there's one meadery that's getting ready to open up in North Carolina. Uh, retro meadery those guys have been collecting used bottles for man years from what i understand and they're gonna just try to go in with the recycled bottle market i know they have all sorts of other regulations they have to follow for you know using recycled bottles and whatnot mm -hmm. but uh it's an interesting concept uh, and hopefully it works out for them but yeah you can imagine like four bottles of the same flavor sitting on the shelf and not one of them looks the same yeah well, I them luck on that because you know the bottle sizes and everything have to be the same and yeah labeling that's a labeling challenge uh it's a really cool concept and i would i would love to to know how they're going to tackle some of those uh you know just dif different bottles types take different label sizes and how, how they're going to tackle that that problem um because it's a it's a neat concept um you know we we recycle as much as we can um the pack text the little the little uh, four pack uh, snap that goes on the top of the cans. We've got bars that uh, collect them for us, and we get those, and we'll re we reuse those. Um, we have bars that collect those for us because um, as re as recyclable as they are, most of the bars throw them in the trash. Right. So we try we try to reset we try to bring them back and it saves us a little money. It keeps it out of the landfill and uh, uh, you know. So it's been with I take them all back to the bottle shop and the, and the stuff is like, I, I'll take them hand, you know, stacks of them. <laughs> I, I guess that kind of shows how much I'm drinking, but you, you know, I, I'd much rather keep them around and inconvenience my wife with my clutter for a couple of weeks and, you know, and then throw them, like you said, throw them in the landfill, which is yeah. definitely where they're going to be going. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you're finishing up. So which one is that you said you were drinking there? Uh, this is our witch, please. Which please, yes. Mic. I don't know if you can see the can. This is this is a really dark can label. This is our witch please. 
Yes, I like it. Though. It's a That's very cool. dark damaged can label, but um, it's what we do for Halloween every year. It's a 13.666% mead, and it uses five black ingredients. So it uses black mangrove honey, blackberry, black cherry, black mulberry, and black currant. There you go. So. Now get some black sage in there, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> No, that sounds amazing. The five black ingredients, which please, is, and you said that's a pretty popular one? Yeah, that one goes pretty quickly. This was our, we had it in bottles last year, but only like one case of bottles last year. We did it in cans for the first time this year. Um, and it went, it went so quickly. We held one case back for our, uh, to bring back out for our anniversary party. So there's still one case floating around. And I, there are people that if they knew where that case was, they would probably just come take it off my hands. <laughs> yeah. Security cameras aren't going to do us any good. They want you to know who took it. No, I took it. You see me. I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, I took it. Just feel it for it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll pay the insurance fees. I don't care. I was taking the witch, please. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh man. So what uh what what's what else does the future hold for Odd Elixir Meads? You guys got the new big spot, you you're expanding the uh the distribution, you got the you know the um the core meads that you guys are producing. What's what's the next uh what's the next big step for, for Odd Elixir? Well, I mean, I think you pretty much, uh, that's, that's, that's 2022 right there in a nutshell. Um, but we do have um, our sights in the future on having an independent tap room, um, probably not any time in the near, near future. Um, but sure. that is definitely something that we are, uh, we are looking uh, to in the future. Maybe the uh, real estate market could get a little better first and we could actually find a place that we can afford because it's, I'm sure it's bad, bad there too, but trying to find commercial real estate in Florida is, I mean, it's the, the only reason we found this place is because we know someone and we were hanging out at the bar talking about it one night. So, <laughs> right. Um, we, got, we actually got really lucky and we were complaining out loud in the right place at the right time that we couldn't find anything. And a friend of ours was like, hey, I got a place. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, we, we do want to have, um, we do want to have an independent tap room moving forward. Um, we love our, our relationship with Abby Barr, um, but there are certain things that we cannot do because it's not technically our tap room. They're, they're an account uh, and they buy all of our product through the distributor. Um, so there right. are some things that we can't do um, kind of independently with them sure. uh, that we would, that we're kind of looking to want to be able to do uh, moving forward. Uh, but that's probably going to be an end of 2023, 2024, that's that's a little ways down. Uh, the, right now, we're focusing on uh, growing our production, um, expanding our distribution uh, markets, and developing Vino Shipper, um, so we can we can access those you know what forty one states that Vino Shipper um, ships to. You know that opens our markets up really well, and that's going to keep us busy for a little while. Uh, we are yeah. uh, kind of opening up some of our small batch stuff that we've literally been doing five and 10 gallons of. We're actually going to be uh, doubling and tripling and quadrupling some of those recipes um, so we can get some of those things out into distribution that we've never been able to do before because we just didn't have the space. Um, our spicy needs are one of those. Those are going to start going into distribution in little small uh, 250 mil cans. Um, and oh. some of our imperial meads are going to go into some, uh, I call them imperial, the, 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 the higher alcohol meads, the 14 to 18 percent meads. Um, those are also going to go into two, some 250 mil cans, a little eight, 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 eight yeah. and change. Um, so that's, that's going to be a new product line um, that's going to come out probably third quarter of the year. Um, so that'll open that market up into some of those people who aren't looking for the 6 percent meads. They are, they're looking for you know, Vikings blood and Chaucer's and those kind of higher alcohol sweeter meads. Um, we'll be able to release some of our specialty stuff that's only up until now been available uh, he here locally. Uh, we'll be able to get those out statewide and on Vino Shipper as well. So we're probably going to be doing some Vino Shipper exclusives. Oh, so. very cool. Now, did you guys have all the equipment necessary to do this and you were just kind of shuffling it around or have you guys had to acquire a bunch of new tanks and fermenters and so yada, we will yada, yada. be expanding our tanks but we actually had all of the tanks um that we that we needed uh they were stacked rather precariously on one another um uh and and we had uh the the, the two big pieces of equipment that we'll be uh, adding is going to be bright tanks and glycol chillers 
So that will allow us to, to uh, temp control uh, more tanks at a time and also carbonate and package um, more cans. We, we, we like to have a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, CO2 in the cans just because it gives the, the, the can a little more stability on the shelf. Yeah. Um, so being able to uh, being able to expand our uh, bright tank capacity and our, our chilling capacity is are those are the next two big um, equipment steps. As far as the fermenters themselves go, we actually have not expanded fermenters. We just can now use them all at one time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, man, I can only imagine. Like you said, it's going from seventy five feet up to a thousand square feet. That's that's got to be some nice, uh, some nice more room for for growth and opportunities. Yeah. So if I wasn't worried about losing the internet connection, I'd give you a tour. But I'm afraid if I move from this spot, I might lose. You. <laughs> hey, no worries. I did an interview with uh, my buddy Sean there in Hawaii. He had to go drive 45 minutes from his house up to park next to the cell tower so he could even get reception. <laughs> so. I completely understand. I don't even have the best reception here where I'm at. It just looks good on my end because it's on my phone. So. <laughs> now maybe maybe next time we chat, I'll actually have better uh, better internet in the building, and I'll be able to give y'all a tour. <laughs> yeah, I'm offended that you don't have better internet. You know what? Well, let's let's put that on a top priority. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the guy called chillers so, first, then we get better internet. <laughs> hey, that's pri that's real priorities right there. Yeah. We don't need internet to make me. We need glycol chillers to do what we need to do. I can I come on board with that. So I did have a bottle I was getting ready to open. If you want to do a, join me for a second here, get your sure. input on it. So are you familiar with Lost Cause Meadery? I have heard of them. Yes, I haven't had anything from them, though. So I came up on this bottle. It's their Coveters Club. It's called Thou Shalt Covet. This is their... Um, their uh, bot uh, bottle club membership, like their first year exclusive. And it is a um, it's raspberry, blackberry, grape with candy cap mushrooms. I don't know if you've worked with candy cap Ooh. mushrooms before, I but apparently that's not supposed to add any mushrooms. So they're supposed to add a, uh, like a maple-ish type of note to it. So this is the one I'm going to be getting into my next review on. So, oh, it smells like maple syrup so much. <laughs> oh, it's got a beautiful color. Yeah. Now this is, from what I understand, this is about seven years old. So I don't, I think it's holding up pretty darn well. It's got a very aged meniscus on there. Very nice and nice and tan color on there. That is beautiful. Yeah, like the color is gorgeous on there, so. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's is it blackberry, raspberry. Again, you get this very maple forward nose. It, it smells like, like it's a maple syrup bottle. It, it's so right there in front of all the berries and everything like that. But holy Christmas. I got to try this one at Major <laughs> Cup. And I, I, so I had to pick up this bottle when I came across it, but I, I'm excited. You said you're, you're trying to make Mazer Cup a, a, a thing this year, man. I would yeah. love to see you up there. I'm going to do my best to get back up there and awesome. I, I need to get out and, 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 and come visit Odd Elixir. There's so much in Florida <laughs> I need to come do and, and visiting you is on the top of my priority list. Yeah, There's a couple of cool spots out here in, uh, in Florida. Now we just had a new meet reopen in Orlando or they're, if they're not open yet, Ooh. they're going to be open really soon. Uh, I want to say Yeah, yeah. I've been following them for a while. They've been posting, but they're finally getting ready to open and do their yeah, thing. I so, think yeah, that's not good. Open, yeah, they're going to be open really soon. So I'm really excited to be able to get out there and try some of their stuff. Um, so you've got some a couple places in Tampa now um, yeah. that do need. So there's 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 some there's some spots around. Yes, definitely. But like I said, the top of my priority list is getting to Odd Elixir because. Yeah. With, with, with your Let cool, us know when you're I, can't I, I can't remember with the B, what your logo, uh, his name was, but that guy is so cool looking. <laughs> That's Benny. 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 Yeah, Benny the B. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I've been in love with you guys' a spot since I saw it, and after getting to know you guys, I'm even more in love with everything you guys do. Um, coming up on the seven o'clock hour, I'm gonna have to hit you and let you run because I gotta go get some dinner and whatnot, but. I always appreciate when you stop by and um, 
again, I'd love to have you on again sometime in the future absolutely. and talk more meat with you. Yeah, absolutely. As soon as I get better internet, I'll give you all a tour. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'll be on the lookout for those emails when you get your internet fixed up. Maybe they won't show up by carrier pigeon next time. <laughs> oh, so and I got a box coming your way, so keep an eye out for it. I am. Like, like I said, I got I got my uh, wife on the lookout for that. We're going to be uh, definitely get into that, do a little unboxing video and see what we got going on from there. So everybody oh, be on the lookout for that. will survive the Florida and Arizona weather. <laughs> Yeah, we've had phenomenal weather this week. It's been perfect in the in the 40s to 60s. Perfect meat shipping uh, weather. So, well, that's great. Well, Florida's not that great right now. Oh. So, Saturday it's supposed to be 90 and raining, and Sunday it's supposed to be 55. Florida cannot decide what what uh, season it is. <laughs> yeah, we had that happen here. We were at 85 one day, and the next day we were down at 65. So, not quite <laughs> the same temperature swing, but I definitely understand what you're what you're going through. So. so well with any luck it, it, it makes it to you in one piece and uh, i look forward to hearing your uh, feedback on it awesome well thank you so much emory for showing up today thank you everybody for watching here like i said if you haven't go given them a follow yet hit up odd elixir there on internet or on instagram on the internet <laughs> not anywhere else and over <laughs> at facebook as well check check out those follows because they are going to be going on to vino shipper probably sooner than later i mean earlier in this year than later in the year so yeah, be on the lookout hopefully. fingers crossed now yeah. let's put the good <laughs> energy out of there to the universe but nonetheless be on the lookout for them on the vino shipper and all that stuff because you're all going to want to get some of their stuff i promise you and then again go follow me over on youtube if you can as well i appreciate that tk and drinks thank you again for showing up emory pleasure thank as you. always love you guys have a good night Oh, tell Blair I said hi, too. I will. I will. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.